Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Into a mixing bowl, add 270 grams or two and a quarter cups of flour, 120 grams or one and a quarter cups of almond flour, four grams or one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two grams or half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and one gram or one quarter teaspoon of salt. Give that a whisk so it all combines together. Set it aside while we prepare our wet ingredients. To a mixing bowl, add 227 grams or one cup of softened butter. We're going to let that start to cream together until it's nice and smooth. I've scraped down the sides and now I'm adding in 150 grams or three quarter cups of sugar. Once they've combined together, add in two large egg yolks. Using just the egg yolks keeps the biscuit really lovely and tender. We're also going to add in four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla. Keep scraping down the sides of the bowl as necessary. Now start to add in your dry ingredients. I'm adding them by the spoonful because I usually make a mess, but you're welcome to just add them all in one go. You should end up with a consistent but soft dough. We're going to wrap this in some cling film and let it chill for at least an hour or up to three days in the fridge. Just like every time I'm going to be rolling something out, I like to pat down my dough until it's fairly flat before I wrap it and chill it. This makes the rolling process so much easier. Once your dough is chilled, sprinkle your work surface with some flour. Roll your dough about an eighth of an inch thick. Cut out your biscuits using a round cutter. Mine has a lovely fluted edge. Each cookie will have a top and a bottom. Once you have two trays completely full, set aside the first and using a smaller cookie cutter, cut a little decoration in the center of the biscuits on your second tray. Once your cookies are on their tray, you'll want to chill them for a further 20 minutes to make sure they hold that perfect shape. These are going to bake for about 12 minutes. Let your cookies cool at least 20 minutes until they're room temperature. I like to line up all of the tops of my biscuits on a separate piece of parchment paper before dusting them with icing sugar. By dusting them now, it makes sure that you can really see that jam shine through your little decoration in the middle. I'm using about half a teaspoon of jam on the bottom half of my cookies. Apricot jam is the most traditional and it tastes delicious with the almond flour in these cookies. Gently place the tops of your biscuit on top of your jam so that the jam just starts to press up through the decoration. I've never met a single person who hasn't fallen in love with these cookies. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I've double wrapped my baking tray with aluminum foil and I'm going to cover the whole thing in butter. This will make sure our crack doesn't stick. Lay your crackers evenly across your baking tray. You may have to trim your crackers so that they all fit in. I like to saw through the cracker just a little bit until you hear that You want the bottom of your tray to be completely covered with crackers. Now set this aside while you make your caramel. To a saucepan, add 227 grams or one cup of salted butter and 220 grams or one cup of brown sugar. We'll turn that onto medium high heat and let it start to melt together. Once the sugar has completely melted and your mixture is bubbling, let it go for about five minutes on medium heat, stirring continuously. Then pour your butter and sugar mix all over the top of your crackers. You want to make sure to spread it out so that your crackers are completely covered. Now into the oven. This is going to bake for five minutes. When the five minutes is up, take your tray out of the oven and sprinkle 300 grams of chopped chocolate or chocolate chips all over the top. This will start to melt immediately, but we're going to pop it back in the oven for one more minute to finish the job. Give your chocolate a smooth with the back of a spoon and then decorate however you want. I'm using sprinkles on one half and chopped walnuts on the other. But you could use pretzels or pecans or crunched up peppermint candies. Whatever toppings are your favorite. These need to cool for three hours before you break them apart and devour. Then remove the foil and slice into bars. They don't have to be perfect squares. These actually look really pretty cut into little shards.
preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Into our bowl goes 400 grams or two boxes of Ritz crackers. You can substitute with your favorite buttery crackers. I'm going to crush mine up by hand, but you can just as easily pop these in your food processor until they're nice and fine. You want it to be a fairly fine consistency. To our crackers, we're going to add 200 grams of score toffee bits. If you can't find score toffee bits, like I couldn't, I smuggled them in from Canada. You can use any toffee and just crush it into little pieces. Give that a little mix. Now in goes 300 milliliters or one can of sweetened condensed milk. You're going to want to keep stirring this until all of the crackery bits have absorbed the condensed milk. It should hold together when you press down with your spatula. Pour your mix into an 8 inch square pan that's been lined with parchment paper. You'll want to spread that out and then start pressing the mixture down into the pan. And when you think you've pressed it down enough, press it down one more time. I even like to use the bottom of a flat glass to really make sure they're pressed in there. These need to bake for 20 minutes. Let these cool for about 10 minutes and then slice into bars. You'll then wanna let them cool completely before eating them. If you wait longer than 10 minutes to slice, you might not get as clean a cut on your bars. I cut mine four by four, making 16 bars in total. This step is optional, but I like to drizzle mine with some dark chocolate. I've just melted it up, popped it into a piping bag, and I'm drizzling it back and forth over my squares. Once the chocolate's set, it's time to dig in. To our mixing bowl goes 175 grams or three quarter cups of salted softened butter. You'll want to beat this for about two minutes until it's really soft and starting to go pale and creamy. You can also do this recipe with a hand mixer or by hand. Once your butter is this beautiful pale yellow, you can add in your sugars. In goes 125 grams or half a cup of granulated sugar and 225 grams, one cup and two tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm using dark brown sugar because I really love the rich flavor it gives these cookies. If you have anything sticking to the sides of your bowl, make sure to scrape it down. To our butter and sugar mix, we're adding one egg and eight grams or two teaspoons of vanilla. Once completely combined, set it aside. To 275 grams or two and a quarter cups of plain or all-purpose flour, add four grams, one teaspoon of baking soda, 11 grams or four tablespoons of ground ginger, eight grams or one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon, and 0.5 grams or half a teaspoon of cloves. Now give that a quick whisk so it's all combined before we add it to our butter mix. Mix your dry and wet ingredients together until it forms a firm but slightly sticky dough. I like to scoop my biscuits using a two tablespoon cookie scoop, but if you wanted even more cookies, you could cut them in half and make them smaller. They do tend to spread when they bake, so make sure to give them plenty of room. These are going to chill for about 20 minutes. While our biscuits are chilling, let's preheat our oven to 170 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And because freshly baked cookies are the best, I like to freeze my dough while it's raw so I can pull them out of the freezer and pop them straight into the oven. This is the perfect solution if you have any last minute guests popping over. Just take the cookies from the freezer, put them on a lined baking sheet and bake them from frozen for 15 minutes. I pop the tray in the freezer and once they're frozen solid, I transfer them over to a plastic bag with the name of the cookies and the bake time on them. These are going to bake for 12 minutes. These chewy crackly cookies just need a few minutes to cool before you take a bite. oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll want to finely chop 112 grams, three quarter cups of pecans. If you're going to chop them at home in your food processor, make sure to add in a tablespoon from your flour allotment so that you don't get pecan butter. The flour will help to absorb the oil from the nuts. Once you've got a nice fine chop, set them aside. To a mixing bowl, add 227 grams or one cup of softened butter and 50 grams or half a cup of powdered sugar. 
Cream that together until it's completely combined. Then add in four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl before adding in my flour. We're adding in 300 grams or two and a quarter cups of flour, minus the tablespoon I used for the pecans earlier. This is going to be quite a crumbly dough, but like every good shortbread, butter is the star. Once the dough is completely combined, add in your finely chopped pecans and stir until they're completely mixed through. You might have to get in there with your hands. I'm using a two tablespoon cookie scoop, but I'm then cutting the balls in half to make them one inch balls, the perfect bite-sized cookie. You'll want to give them a little roll and then pop them on your baking tray. These don't grow or spread very much, so you can fit quite a few on one tray and into the oven. These are going to bake for 15 to 18 minutes until they're just slightly golden. You know they're finished when you can smell the nuttiness coming out of the oven and they have a very delicately golden brown color. While they're still warm, toss each one of your pecan snowballs into 100 grams or one cup of powdered sugar. You're going to want to dip these at least twice to get the perfect snowball look. The first dip while the cookies are still warm will cause the sugar to melt and almost create a glaze. And the second one really adds the snowball-y decoration. Place your double dipped pecan snowballs on a different plate so they don't pick up any more heat from the pan. Super easy and delicious. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To your mixing bowl, add 227 grams or one cup of softened salted butter and 113 grams or one cup of icing sugar that's been sifted. We're also going to add four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla and cream that together. It should be nice and smooth and soft and all of the icing sugar should be beaten into the butter. Butter is the key ingredient here, so make sure you're using the best quality you can get. Add in 240 grams or two cups of flour. Stir that to combine until it comes into a wet sandy mix. Now add in 15 grams or one tablespoon of milk to really loosen up this dough and make it pipeable. That's ready to be transferred to our piping bag. You can also make these using a spritz cookie press. I fit my piping bag with a large star tip. This gives a lovely, delicate pattern to our cookies. Spoon your mix into your piping bag, trying to keep it in one large lump. This prevents air bubbles when piping. I like to give the dough a little bit of a chop just in case there are air bubbles stuck in there. I aim my hand towards the back of the bag so that it releases those pockets. Take a tiny bit of your dough and place it under the four corners of your parchment. This helps to keep your parchment stuck to your pan so when you're piping it doesn't lift up. Now we're going to make little swirls. I like to hold the top of my bag with my left hand and direct using my right hand. And just swirl the dough from the outside and into the middle. These don't spread much so you can fit 12 easily on a baking tray. If you have any peaks on your cookies you can take a damp finger and just pat them down to prevent any burning. And these are going into the oven for 15 minutes. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To 180 grams or one and a half cups of flour, add in six grams or two teaspoons of cinnamon, four grams or one teaspoon of baking soda, and four grams, one teaspoon of salt. Give that a whisk until it's all mixed together. To a mixing bowl, add 227 grams or one cup of unsalted softened butter. Start that mixing so that the butter gets nice and soft. Add in 200 grams or one cup of brown sugar and 100 grams, half a cup of granulated sugar. You'll want to cream this until it's completely combined. You might have to give it a helping hand with your spatula. To the butter and sugar mix, add in two eggs, one at a time, making sure they're completely incorporated before adding in the next. Then in goes eight grams or two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to scrape down the bowl before we add in our dry ingredients. 
I'm gradually adding in my dry ingredients to avoid a mess, but if you're doing this by hand, you can add it all at once. Once the dry ingredients have been added in to the butter mix, you'll notice that the dough is still very wet, but we haven't added in our oats yet. So now in goes 240 grams or three cups of rolled oats. Make sure to scrape down your paddle if you're using a mixer so that you don't miss out on any of that amazing dough. I'm using 283 grams, about one and three quarter cups of jumbo chocolate chips. And I like to stir in my jumbo chocolate chips by hand. I'm using a four tablespoon cookie scoop because I like my oatmeal chocolate chips extra big, but you'll wanna make sure to leave enough space on your baking tray so that they can spread. You can make these using a two tablespoon scoop as well, or even just two tablespoons, scooping the dough out and dropping it onto your tray and into the oven. These are going to bake for 10 to 12 minutes until the edges are golden. But if you made really big ones like me, you might need to tack on an extra minute or two. They're beautifully golden, they smell delicious, and I cannot wait to dig in. Let these cool slightly, if you can, and enjoy with a big glass of milk. Into our mixing bowl goes 227 grams or one cup of softened butter. You'll want to set this on high to cream the butter. Into our mixing bowl goes 200 grams or one cup of granulated sugar. And of course, you can do this with a hand mixer or by hand. Make sure you scrape down the sides often so that everything becomes well incorporated. Now we're going to add one egg. Once the egg's been fully combined, add in four grams or one teaspoon of vanilla. Of course, the classic flavor is peppermint, so if you'd rather your cookie be peppermint flavored, add in half a teaspoon of peppermint extract instead of vanilla. We're going to give that a little mix, then set it aside to prepare our dry ingredients. To 385 grams or two and three quarter cups of flour, we're going to add three grams or half a teaspoon of salt and four grams or one teaspoon of baking powder. Give that a little whisk so it all comes together. Add your flour to your butter mix. You can add it all in one go, but I'm just trying to avoid my standard mess. That will mix together into a nice consistent dough. I always like to make sure to scrape down the bowl at the very end. I don't want any little straggly bits of butter left behind. Now that our dough has come together, we're going to split it in half. Leave half of your dough in your mixing bowl and set the other half aside. I'm using gel food coloring because I find it doesn't alter the consistency of the dough as much and it gives a much richer color. And I'm using a wooden skewer to get the gel out of the jar. Once your skewer has touched the dough, you don't want to put it back in your jar. I ended up adding more food coloring with a new skewer. Transfer your dough into a bowl and then cover both bowls with cling film. These need to chill for three hours. The chill time not only allows for your dough to stiffen up so it's easier to roll, but it also helps the color to develop in the red dough. Once your dough has chilled, roll it into small balls. I like to weigh mine out at 10 grams each. This makes sure the swirl in your candy cane is absolutely perfect. If your kitchen is warm, like mine is, it's best to pop your dough balls back into the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes. This just helps them firm up a little bit more. I like to start with my non-colored piece. I roll it to about three inches or so, and then we'll do the same with the red one. You want them to be about the same length. And the red will come off on your hand a little bit, which is why I start with the non-colored dough. Once you've got the same size sausages, you're going to smush them down into each other. Give them a gentle twist, and then roll them out very gently on your board so that they become one cohesive piece. You can give them an additional twist here if you've lost some of that original spiral. Now we'll move them onto our baking tray, where we'll create that perfect hook. You want to make sure to give them a little bit of room because they do spread out a little bit. Once your cookies are all rolled out, get your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Whisk up an egg white just until it becomes a little bit frothy. Then with a pastry brush, brush your egg white onto your candy canes and sprinkle them with sparkling sugar. You can use regular granulated sugar if you can't find sparkling sugar, but I love the way the sparkling sugar makes these cookies look. These are going to bake for eight to 10 minutes until they just start to go golden. Let these cool before removing them from the tray. And here are your perfect candy cane cookies, ready for eating or decorating your tree. To 
To a mixing bowl, add in a half a cup or 113 grams of softened butter. Start that mixing so that it becomes nice and soft. Then add in half a cup or 100 grams of sugar and a quarter cup or 50 grams of brown sugar. You want to cream that together until it's really well combined, making sure to scrape down the sides occasionally. Once the butter and sugar has come together, you're going to add in one egg and one tablespoon or 20 grams of molasses. I'm using black treacle because that's what's available to me. The molasses in this recipe not only adds flavor, but gives structure to the biscuit so that you can actually hang it on your tree. Once that's completely combined, set it aside and we'll get started on our dry ingredients. To a bowl, add 240 grams or two cups of flour, two grams or a quarter teaspoon of salt, and four grams or three quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Give that a little whisk to combine. I'm giving the bowl one more scrape before adding in the flour to make sure all of our wet ingredients are properly mixed. And then in go all of our dry ingredients. This will form a nice stiff dough. Transfer your cookie dough onto some cling film. I like to flatten my dough down with the cling film. It not only chills quicker, but it helps us to roll it out easier later. And into the fridge. Let the dough chill for at least one hour or overnight so when you roll it out, you have the most perfect biscuits. While our dough is chilling, let's prepare our candy. I'm using Hard Jolly Ranchers and I've just separated them into their designated colors. Any clearish hard candy will work. I like to pop my candies into a Ziploc bag and then smash them with a rolling pin so they become nice, fine shards. I tend to do this on a chopping board because it can leave marks on your work surface and give it a good old smash. You might need to double bag your candy. Set your candy aside, ready for decorating. Our dough is ready to roll. Dust your work surface with flour and then roll out your dough to about an eighth of an inch thick. Using your favorite holiday themed cookie cutters, cut out as many cookies as you can from your first roll. Then scrunch your dough together and keep rolling. To create the holes in the center of your cookies, I would recommend using a large piping tip. It's the perfect size for your stained glass window. And if you plan on hanging them on your tree, a straw is the perfect tool for making your little string hole. Once you've cut out your centers, preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty humid where I live, so my candy has started sticking together. This is still gonna work just fine. You'll want to fill all of your cookies with your candy. You can mix and match colors or do them all the same. It's up to you. And into the oven. These are going to bake for nine to 10 minutes or until there's a little bit of golden brown on the edge of the cookies and the candy has melted in the middle. Don't they just look so charming? Let these cool on their trays for about five minutes and then carefully slide the parchment off of the tray onto your work surface. This will allow the candy to set up. You want them to cool completely before peeling them off your paper. So sweet, yeah, I need it from you. Got my hands all on your sweet. Everything I want is sugar like yes, please. Love is like candy. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To a mixing bowl, add 227 grams or one cup of softened butter. Start that creaming together so that it's nice and smooth. Make sure to scrape down your bowl before adding in any other ingredients. To your softened butter, add 200 grams or one cup of sugar and 100 grams or half a cup of brown sugar. You want these to completely combine. Once they're really creamed together, scrape down the sides of your bowl before adding in one egg and one egg yolk. Once the egg yolks have been mixed in, add in six grams or one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. In a bowl, combine 380 grams or three cups of flour, seven grams or one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and three grams or half a teaspoon of salt. You'll want to give that a mix so it all comes together. Gradually add your dry ingredients to your wet ingredients. The dough should be nice and firm so that we can easily roll it. Into a bowl goes 35 grams or a third of a cup of castor or super fine sugar and eight grams or three teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Mix them together really well so that the sugar and the cinnamon are thoroughly combined. I'm using a two tablespoon cookie scoop. 
I'm scooping my dough right into my hand, rolling them into balls, and then dropping them into the cinnamon sugar. Make sure they're fully coated before placing them on a lined baking sheet. You can put them as close together as you want at this stage. They need to chill before we bake them. You'll want them to chill for at least an hour. Mine chilled for about three. Once they've chilled, place your cookies on a lined baking tray. You'll want to leave a fair amount of space between them. These are going to bake for 12 minutes until the edges get nice and golden. And here they are, the classic chewy snickerdoodle. Enjoy. Don't preheat your oven. These dough balls are fried, not baked. Into our mixing bowl goes four eggs. And you can definitely do this by hand because my nonna didn't have a mixer. You'll want to beat your eggs for at least two minutes until they really come together. When your mixture is frothy and has gone a little bit pale and it has no egg whites running through it, that's when it's ready. To your eggs, add in 60 milliliters or a quarter cup of any neutral oil. I'm adding in the zest of an orange. Lemon is more traditional, but orange is always what my nonna used. You can even use extract or rum to flavor this recipe. Now add in 280 grams, that's two cups and two tablespoons of flour. You'll need extra flour for kneading later on, so make sure you have a little bit more on hand. Once your very sticky dough has come together, turn it out onto a floured work surface and start kneading. I like to make sure my hands are well floured throughout this process. Just push the dough away from you and then turn it back on itself, continuously rotating in a circle. After about eight minutes of kneading, you should have a really nice smooth dough. If you give it a poke, it should spring back to you. Pop your dough into a bowl and cover it up for about 60 minutes. I think you're both on Santa's nice list, aren't you? Are you gonna get lots of presents for Christmas from Santa? Turn your rested dough back onto a floured work surface and start to pat it out flat. I'm patting it into a rectangular shape because it makes it easier for slicing. Roll out your dough until it's half a centimeter thick. Slice your dough into one centimeter strips. And then working through each strip, cut it into one centimeter pieces. I find a pizza cutter the best tool for this job. Once your pieces are cut, roll them into little balls and set them aside on a floured baking tray. This is the best time to recruit your family members. Into a shallow saute pan, add about an inch of vegetable oil. You'll want to start heating this to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. If you haven't got a thermometer, you can check the temperature by putting the back end of a wooden spoon into the hot oil. If it starts bubbling vigorously like this, your oil is ready to fry. Carefully add in a spoonful of your dough balls. Give them a little swish around the pan to make sure they don't stick to the bottom. These should start puffing up and they take about three to four minutes to get that beautiful golden brown color. Once the first batch is finished, drain them onto a paper towel lined baking tray. This helps to absorb any excess oil and it makes sure your struffoli are beautiful and crunchy. Continue with the rest of your dough balls frying in batches. Once your dough balls are fried, add 200 milliliters or one cup of honey to a non-stick saute pan. Set this to medium heat so it becomes really nice and runny. Once your honey is completely liquid, add your struffoli to the pan. You'll want to definitely use the biggest pan you've got. Turn off the heat and start tossing your dough balls until they're completely coated in the honey. Once the honey starts to cool and thicken, sprinkle your balls with half of your sprinkle mix. These are traditionally coated in colored sprinkles to signify the light and joy that Christmas brings. Pile them high on a beautiful plate and continue covering with sprinkles. They're so fun and delicious. Enjoy. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To a mixing bowl, add 113 grams or half a cup of unsalted butter that's been softened. We're going to cream this until it's soft and smooth. To our butter, we're adding 118 milliliters or half a cup of vegetable oil. This keeps the cookies really soft. The two fats won't completely combine together, but you'll want to do your best in trying to get them incorporated. I'm giving it a helping hand with my spatula. 
to our oil and butter, add 115 grams or half a cup of granulated sugar and 50 grams or half a cup of powdered sugar. To our butter mix, we're adding one and a half teaspoons or four grams of ground ginger, one teaspoon, about three grams of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon, about 0.5 grams of cardamom, and an eighth a teaspoon or 0.25 grams of cloves. And then we're going to grate in a quarter teaspoon, about half a gram of nutmeg, and a half teaspoon, one gram of allspice. Adding the spices to the fat really helps to bring out their oils and flavors. To round out our spices, we're going to give it a pinch of freshly cracked black pepper. In goes one egg and two teaspoons or eight grams of vanilla extract. Let this completely incorporate and then set it aside. To two cups or 250 grams of flour, we're adding three quarter teaspoons or about four grams of baking soda and a half a teaspoon, about two grams of salt. Give that a whisk together so they're thoroughly combined. Slowly add in your dry ingredients to your wet ingredients. This is a fairly soft dough, so we want to put it in the fridge for at least an hour. I'm just moving it to a smaller bowl so that it fits in my tiny little fridge. You can also pop this in the freezer for 15 minutes if you don't want to wait the full hour. To one cup of granulated sugar, we're adding three tablespoons of cinnamon and just giving that a stir together with a fork. I like to use a two tablespoon cookie scoop. Even after chilling, this dough is really soft, so we wanna make sure to get the perfect round balls. I scoop my dough directly into my cinnamon sugar and give it a quick toss. This makes sure the cookie dough doesn't stick to my hands when I'm rolling them into their little balls. I always do a second dip in the cinnamon sugar just to be sure they're fully coated. Once you've got all of your cookies on your baking tray, you'll want something with a flat bottom, so either the palm of your hand or the bottom of a glass, press your cookies down into little circles. You're going to bake these for 12 to 14 minutes until the edges are just set. Make sure you leave room on the baking tray for your cookies to spread. After the cookies have been out of the oven for five minutes, move them complete with the parchment paper off of their tray so that they can cool completely before glazing. To 180 grams or one and a half cups of icing sugar, we're going to grate in a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. To our dry mix, we're adding three tablespoons or 44 milliliters of whole milk. Now Taylor specifies you can use milk or you can use eggnog, but eggnog isn't commercially available in the UK, so we've gone with milk here. You'll want to make sure when you lift your whisk, your icing leaves a really faint ribbon that disappears almost immediately. If your icing is too thin, it will run right off your cookie. Top each cookie with about half a teaspoon of icing. Spread the icing out with the tip of your spoon. Make sure to set them onto a flat surface so that they dry completely. I like to sprinkle the top of mine with cinnamon for that perfect festive look. To a large bowl, add four egg whites, that's 120 grams. You'll want to whisk these to stiff peaks. When it just starts to get foamy, add in a pinch of salt. There's our beautiful stiff peak. And that's how you know it's ready. To a separate bowl, add 360 grams, three and a quarter cups of ground almonds. To this, you'll add 180 grams, just shy one cup of sugar. Whisk that together so that any almondy clumps have broken up and everything's combined. I'm using my fingers to break up any large clumps. Add one third of your almond mix to your egg whites and gently fold them in. To your egg white mix, add in two grams, one teaspoon of almond extract, or if you want to use amaretto liqueur, you'll use two teaspoons, four grams of that, and two teaspoons, four grams of vanilla extract. And just fold that in to combine. Add in the rest of your almond and sugar mix. You'll want to continue folding this in, scooping along the bottom of the bowl and then bringing the mix down the center. This should form a wet sand-like dough. We're going to pop this in the fridge for 30 minutes to set up. While the dough is chilling, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Prepare your baking trays with some parchment paper, then set aside so they're ready for your cookies. I'm using a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop. Scoop your dough directly into your sugar. You'll need about half a cup, 100 grams of granulated sugar. 
Then with wet hands, roll it into a ball and drop it into your icing sugar. You'll need again about 100 grams, three quarter cups of your icing sugar. I like to swirl the bowl of icing sugar because I find that really helps the cookie create its circular shape and it coats the entire cookie in sugar. Repeat this process, making sure the palms of your hands are wet until you've finished rolling all of the dough. These need about a two centimeter gap on your baking tray. These are going to bake for 20 minutes or until they're cracked on top and golden. Your whole kitchen is going to smell so fragrant. While they're still warm, remove them to a cooling rack and let them cool completely. Get your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no chilling in this recipe. You want your butter to be soft, a little warmer than room temperature. And if you don't wanna put it in the microwave because that can melt your butter and change the structure of your cookie, this is the perfect trick to warm it up. Pour water from a recently boiled kettle into a heat proof bowl. You want your bowl to be larger than your bowl with your butter. Let this water sit for about 30 seconds so that your bowl gets very hot. Then carefully drain the water and invert the bowl over your bowl of butter. The heat from the bowl will gently soften the butter without melting it. Let this sit for about 10 minutes. It's important that your egg is also at room temperature. So if you've just pulled it out of the fridge, here's how you warm it up quickly. Fill a little bowl or a mug with hot tap water. You don't want to use boiling water. Pop your egg in the bowl and let it sit for about 10 minutes. This will gently bring it up to room temperature. Into a mixing bowl goes 170 grams or three and a quarter cups of our soft unsalted butter, 50 grams or a quarter cup of white sugar, and 227 grams or one cup of brown sugar. Cream this together. You'll want to make sure it's really thoroughly combined. Give your mixer a helping hand by scraping down the sides of the bowl. Once it looks like this, we're going to add in our room temperature egg. And once that's been mixed in, add in your vanilla. Two teaspoons minimum, but I'm using four teaspoons because I love vanilla. To 240 grams or two cups of flour, we're adding in two teaspoons, eight grams of corn flour or cornstarch one teaspoon or four grams of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. Give that a quick whisk together. The addition of baking soda and corn flour or cornstarch helps to give this cookie its amazing structure. It's crunchy on the outside from the baking soda, but lovely and chewy in the center from the corn flour. Add all of your dry ingredients into your wet ingredients and give them a stir. You want all of the flour mix to be absorbed into the wet ingredients it's time to add in the chocolate chips. We're using 350 grams, 12 ounces, about two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. For me, the chocolate chip to dough ratio is the most important thing in a chocolate chip cookie recipe. So I like to add a lot. I stir these in by hand because to be honest, I'm not sure my mixer can handle it. Make sure you scrape all the way to the bottom so you're not missing out on getting those chocolate chips completely incorporated into your dough. I'm using a four tablespoon cookie scoop. These are going to be big cookies, but I usually make them with a two tablespoon cookie scoop, which makes them a little bit more manageable. Give these cookies plenty of room to spread. And for that extra perfect melty chocolate bit on top, I pop on three chips onto each scooped dough ball. Now into the oven. For a smaller cookie, you'll bake these for eight to 10 minutes. But if you're making large ones like mine, you're going to need about 10 to 12 minutes or until the edges are perfectly golden. You'll know they're done when they start to have a crinkly golden brown edge. Once your cookies have come out of the oven for that perfect round shape, grab yourself a glass or a round cookie cutter and just swirl it around your cookie like this. Scoop those edges in towards the middle and swirl your cookie on the inside of whatever you're using. This needs to be done as soon as they come out of the oven. After they've cooled for about a minute on your baking sheet, transfer them over to a wire rack to cool completely. It's time to dig into your picture perfect delicious chocolate chip cookies. Get your oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To 488 grams of flour, add two teaspoons of baking soda and three quarter teaspoons of salt. Mix it all together so the ingredients are combined. To a large mixing bowl, add 225 grams of softened unsalted butter, 362 grams of granulated sugar, and the zest of one lemon. Set your lemon aside 
because we're going to be using the juice for our icing later. Cream together your butter and sugar. Look how gorgeous and smooth and fluffy that looks. You'll want to remember to scrape down the sides of the bowl every time you add in a new ingredient. This just makes sure everything is combined together. In go two eggs, one at a time, and a teaspoon of lemon extract. In this recipe, we're using 425 grams of whole milk ricotta cheese. You can see my ricotta has a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl. You'll want to try to not get that into your cookie mix, so drain it off as much as you can. A little bit won't hurt, but you want to make sure you're using the soft ricotta, not the hard crumbly one. Add your ricotta cheese to your butter and sugar mix and we're going to stir that until it's just come together. Give your wet ingredients one final stir by hand before folding in your dry ingredients. It takes a bit of muscle power to fold in that flour, but we really want to make sure we're not overworking those glutens here. That's what gives the cookie its beautiful, delicate texture. I'm using my smallest cookie scoop for this recipe. If you make these cookies too big, the weight will actually cause them to sink in the center and you won't have that lovely dome shape. Now into the oven. These are going to bake from anywhere between 9 to 12 minutes depending on your oven. What we're looking for is just a gentle golden brown around the edge. We'll let these cool for about 2 to 3 minutes on the tray and then we'll move them to the cooling rack. While these are cooling, let's make our lemony icing. Sift 230 grams of icing sugar. Mine is really lumpy and definitely needs the sifting. Add the juice of one lemon, about four tablespoons. I like to do this through my sieve as well because it catches the seeds. And three tablespoons of melted butter. Now whisk that together until it makes a nice thick icing. We want this to be dippable, so if we need to thin it out, we'll just add in a little bit of water. You want the ribbon off of the whisk to almost disappear instantly when it drips back into the bowl. Now dip your cookies, swirl them around a bit to get off that excess and place them back onto your baking tray to set. The icing doesn't get completely hard because of the butter, but it will firm up a little bit. And now is a great time if you want to add sprinkles or any other decorations to the top. Ooh. 